Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I'm joined today by Timothy Atik, who just preached a sermon on Psalm 23 called Who's in Control Here? Timothy, thank you so much for being here with us yeah, today. Yeah, I love being back at Faith Bridge. Oh yeah, it's always a party. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, a few questions that came in, um, uh, mostly about uh, talking about pain. And yep. so at the end of your sermon, you talked about a letter that a young girl wrote that yep. you shared with Breakaway, um, in which she said that her pain became a platform. Yeah. Could you elaborate on that a little bit, how pain can become a platform? Yeah, well, if you think about it, I mean, pain is a part of everyone's story. Right. If it hasn't been, it will be at some point. And, you know, God never wastes your pain. He can take your story. And what what I found with that girl's story is that it was so many other people's story as well. Right. They were yeah. coming up to me at Breakaway saying, that is my story. Mm-hmm. And so for this girl to believe she doesn't have a story to hide, but a story to tell, right. it, God gave her that story or allowed her to, to flourish even in the midst of her pain so that she can then share a story with others and point other people to, to hope in That's Jesus right. in the midst of the valley. That's right. And so I think, I think it is a matter of saying, you know what, I wouldn't have chosen this, mm-hmm. this story, but at the same time, I can't completely see everything that God can do through my story. So I'm going to trust that he wants to take my story and actually use it in other people's lives. And so right. I I would hope, I encourage anyone, if God's given you a story that has pain in it, share it liberally. Right. Because you can't imagine the amount of people who are going to be like, okay, I've never shared this with anyone, but that's my story. I've gone through that. That resonates with me. And God's going to use it and exactly. give you the platform to point people to to hope. That's exactly right. Yeah. And yeah, no one's going to avoid pain. No yeah. one's going to avoid suffering. Yeah. But if you can hear those stories of hope and yeah. how people came through suffering, That's and God right. was able to, you know, bring beauty from ashes, that kind of thing, yeah. it can be uh, a witness That's um, right. to others. Absolutely. And so we have a couple practical questions sure. regarding pain as a platform. Great. Uh, the first was um, maybe practical ways that we could recognize uh, His will for us um, when we're given a platform through pain. Uh, I, I guess there's a lot of tor- turmoil and chaos that can come uh, when we're in the midst of pain. Um, and so how can we recognize how he wants us to use that pain as a platform, uh, practically speaking? Yeah, I think it, I think it kind of just goes back to what I just said of, like I've got a friend who was in a, was in a severe accident and has for over a year now having, he's had to relearn how to walk. Oh, wow. And that's mm-hmm. been his, his story. It's been the yeah. story of his family. And we sat at breakfast and he was able to just say like, he realizes that this is, this is his story and he wants to share it. He doesn't know where he's supposed to share it, right. but he's available right. to share it. And I think, I think that when you, when you come to a place in your heart where you just say, God, I'm available. Right then you let God work it out. But that means, you know, if you're available to share your story, then tell the church and say, hey, here's my story. I'm willing to share it, whether it means just sharing it with one person or sharing it on a Sunday. I'm not seeking the stage. I'm just seeking to be faithful with the story God's given me. And so, you know, there, there's, I'm not a big fan of small talk. You know, when right. when you're in conversation with people and as you meet people, as you journey through life, if God's given you a story, be really quick to just point people mm-hmm. to what God has done yeah. in your life and, and see what God does. I can't give specifics now because everyone's life is different, exactly but the right. main message is just be available and tell God that you are available right. and let Him open up the doors. Right, well, and that's huge because especially when you're going through that pain, uh, I don't think anyone's expected to be like, okay, uh, here's exactly how I'm going to use what yeah. I'm going through right now as a platform. But we can always say, uh, God, use me. Yeah. Um, I'm available. That's I, a, right. God loves to answer that prayer. Exactly. God, use me. He, yeah. he, it might not be what you want it to look like, but he delights to answer that Absolutely. prayer. Absolutely. Yeah. So make yourself yeah. available. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Um, and then the other question um, came from someone who wants to know about um, so the pain they're experiencing has caused a lot of anger, and their pain was, came from someone else. Um, sure. And so they want to know, okay, 
I know this pain can be used as a platform, but I'm having trouble forgiving that person yep. who causes pain. Sure. Do you have any practical advice for how that person um, can move towards forgiveness? Yeah. Well, you know what? That's a. I, I know none of the story or the background to this particular situation, yeah. but in my own experience with forgiveness, what I've found is that forgiveness, forgiving someone is rarely, if ever, a feeling. Yeah. You will never feel like forgiving someone who's really wronged you. And if you wait till you feel like forgiving that person to actually forgive them, you probably will never forgive right. them. Yeah. Forgiveness is often a choice you make despite how you feel. That's right. It's coming to a place where you realize that the person getting hurt the most by your bitterness and anger is actually you. It's yeah. not the person who wronged you, it's you. That's right. It's your soul that's getting eaten up. And so I think a lot of times when people think about forgiving someone else, they feel like to forgive someone they're losing. Mm. Like if yeah. I forgive that person, I'm telling them they won. Right, you're giving and up higher ground it, there. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's not true. Right. What you're winning is your joy. That's you're right. winning your joy back. Yeah. And so, you know, Jesus has set the model for us that he's forgiven us. We should forgive others. Forgiven people forgive people. That's a nice, it's easy for me to say it. Sure. It's hard to live out. But you know what? I believe forgiveness is an intentional choice you make to surrender your right to justice. Saying, right. I don't have to be right. I don't have to get even an apology or for this person to own up to everything. Just I need to keep my side of the street clean, which means I'm not going to let this rob me of joy anymore. I'm right. going to release this person and let God take care of the rest. And that's right. and that's yeah. often a process. Yeah. You know, that's Absolutely. not just like a overnight switch you flip and then you're done with it. You know, for me, I went through a really traumatic experience where I forgave people and then it was a constant discipline when bitterness would creep up to say, "Well, wait, I, I gave up my right, right to bitterness right. because I already forgave them. Yeah. So I don't have the right to be angry or bitter anymore. But I did. It's a, you know what? Your what you think determines how you feel. How you feel determines how you act. Right. We want to do things based on how we feel, but you have to trace it all the way back to your thought. When you right. tell yourself, "I've already forgiven this person," right. then your feelings will follow, and that'll. Your right. actions will follow that. So. That's right. Yeah, so forgiveness is it's really an act of faith in, in which we're doing it out of trust and obedience. That's right. Rather than just, I don't feel like it yeah. uh, right now. And then and then we do trust that God will then use that forgiveness That's to right. transform our own hearts um, yeah. and hopefully to you know bring some reconciliation yeah. Uh, yeah. there. Yeah, that's uh, incredibly helpful. And Timothy, thank you so much uh, yeah. for being here. Really always enjoy having yeah. you here. And thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.